face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. As of this week, we're going to look upon the soul rock times of Radio Rock versus Gigalith, two of the greatest Pokemon of all time, if you ask me. Uh, I'm a huge fan of rock types in general, and soul rock are such a rare trait. There really aren't that many. I think there are roughly five or six of them. Radio Rock and Gigalith represents the defensive part of that, and even though they are defensive, they're still are really, really offensive. And we're gonna talk about these Pokemon's overarching theme and you know find out which one of these two of course are better. Um both have had strong niches, even though they're lower tier Pokemon, they've always been viable in every tier due to their sheer abilities. So don't let the tiers fool you. They have an aspect and a concept that really does outshine their typing. And first we're gonna go over actually the typing itself and while it is both interesting and kind of unfortunate at the same time. So with that said, let's start off. A soul rock type has a very strong niche in actually walling fire types with flying stabs and fire spamming. Um, fire flying and normal and poison are very strong resistances. While it is unfortunate for rock type, it will always be in the reason why it did so poorly in the region. Well, one, even though there were actually no soul rock types there, you know, the rock round combination was really, really common. However, uh, we have witness defining grass, ground, steel, and water. All these being very common, which means more often than not that rock typing needs something to kind of alleviate itself for weaknesses, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to do. Quite frankly, I think a soul rock type is good defensively, and everything else that combines with it kind of kind of makes things suffer. I believe the strongest combination are grass and rock to be able to alleviate the weaknesses, but at the same time, I don't believe it helped all that much. So overall, I would say rock type is a good defensive typing for selected matchups, as we all know, Charizard, Talonflame, and etc. So the Pokemon we're going to check out is, of course, Regia Rock first, since it was introduced first. Now, much like Regia I introduced last week, Regia Rock has the same stat distribution but peaks at different things. Um, we have 80 in its HP, 100 in attack, 200 in defense, 50 in both special attack and speed, and special defense at 100. Now, while one could say that special defense is definitely lower than its defense, I'll, I'll say that most certainly, it is not bad. It is one of the highest special defense to a rock type. It is, it is fairly rare. It's super usable special defense, which makes this Pokemon very interesting. As it shared the same issue as what said Radio Eyes is doing, which is that it doesn't necessarily has a high speed. 50 while workable is definitely forcing Radio Rock to take a hit more often than not. Luckily for it, it clearly has the defenses to pull that off and an HP that is fairly high. And it doesn't have as many tough weaknesses as Radio Eyes. So Radio Rock, overall, really good. Really, really good. And uh, I really, really think this Pokemon is very underrated by stat distribution alone. It clearly has another defensive niche that really few Pokemons do have. And the other one, of course, is the one we're going to compare to. <laughs> but overall, as you guys see, you just have it said, really, Radio Eyes has special attack and special defense at 100 and 200. Here it's shifted, which means that it's more of an offensive threat than special defense or special defensive threat but overall it checks out it's a definitely good overall pokemon stat distribution wise for its ability we have clear body and sturdy i do believe sturdy is probably one of the most wasted ability on a defensive pokemon like ever while i do believe clear body will work better for Regirock rock than Regi eyes mainly because of your intimidate and whatnot really being immune to that is very very good and will be your primary actually ability because sturdy, you don't need that. You look at the defenses. If you are at full HP, you do not need sturdy here. You'll you'll figure that out. You you'll most likely survive anything. Even a choice banded in Fernape close combat can't one hit KO a Regi Rock. That's that's where we are, people. That's how good a Regi Rock is. Uh, but you know, stat isn't everything. There's a reason Regi Rock is in the lowest tier right now in Generation Seven. I, for the life of me, can't understand it, but it is the move pool. Let's talk about that. That was like the worst segue I ever done. 
to talking about moves because Ridge Rock's move pool is actually fairly good. So I don't believe that has anything to do with its tier, to be honest. That said, what is a Ridge Rock? Well, it can curse, and that's very usable for a Pokemon that already is slow. Stone Edge is your bread and butter when it comes to offensive stabs. Hammer Arm and Super Power. I say Hammer Arm is better here, uh, mainly because it is stronger, but also. Uh, well, not necessarily stronger, but you don't alleviate yourself your defenses and attack while using it. You lose speed, and as stated before, it necess doesn't necessarily mean anything since your core is not <clears throat> speed in the first place. Smackdown, yes. Very useful for flying type if you want to start doing everything else or a Pokemon that is levitating because you do have access to Earthquake. Uh, Thunderbolt, decent filler actually. While special attack is low, uh, Thunderbolt or Sap Cannon actually are usable moves for Regirock and Doom. Um, can be used for NIS situations, though clearly, you no know, Stone Edge is probably still the thing you going to go for. Rock Polish, same as Red Ice here, while it isn't necessarily speedy, it can be speedy, so <laughs> you can capitalize on that to go to Thunder Wave for the very same reason here. If you're not, a, if you're slower, Thunder Wave probably will solve the worst for you. Psych Up, it's here for one reason. See, Psych Up do recover your HP, and since Red Rock doesn't necessarily have a natural recovery outside of Rest, Psych up is an option to get it with Giga Impact actually uh, to be able to actually alleviate yourself of a C move to use anything to be completely honest um, or explosion for that matter. I forget actually to mention that, but explosion is also a C move, so a combination with Psych up could be interesting, most certainly. Definitely a niche, but it's up there. Uh, Rock Slide is your safer move. Iron Head, yeah, it, it's filler, good against other rock types, but then again, you probably would go for Earthquake anyway. Uh, Stealth Rocks. Since it is a defensive Pokemon, it is very, very usable to actually capitalize on something like setting up Stealth Frogs very safely. Uh, Stomping Tantrum, uh, it's there because it actually is a good move if you want to capitalize on that. The Earthquake, as said already, is still the better. Frog Chop, Dark move overall is good, and uh, since it got to this generation, it means it has another way of attacking Psychic types. And that's always going to be helpful, since they're always bulking, and of course Stone Edge has a chance of missing. Block, nothing to it. Block, Relox Vian, Ring Opponent, which means you can possible Toxic Stall with your overarching massive defense, and you know, the C Psych Up. Or just overall, if you want to set up Curses and the right to match up to actually be able to do just so. Um, one thing Red Rock has that makes it really interesting for a Rock type is that it got the Elemental Punches. That's Ice, Fire and Thunder Punch, it also has its Brain Punch. And as we stated before, due to its kind of workable special defense of 100, an Assaultus variant with Brain Punch isn't necessarily all that bad. Uh, while 100 in attack isn't necessarily the most intimidating part, one really has to consider it has 200 in defense, it has 100 in special defense. This guy takes hits. It is not whether or not it 2 or 3 hits KO his opponent, it is whether or not your opponent can 4 to 5 times hit you to die. It, it's definitely up there. If the matchups allow it, it is a very, very tough task to actually kill a Regirock, which is also why this Pokemon is so goddamn interesting, and while I can't for the life of me know why it's still PU for this very reason, it's a very good Pokemon. It is whether or not it is better in Gigalith, and well, we are here to find out, so let's talk about Gigalith a little bit. Now I have a bit of a confession. If it wasn't for Stoutland, Gigalith would be probably my favorite generation 5 Pokemon. It is definitely my second favorite, it has a lot to do with the design, but also it is a very, very scary Pokemon. It is definitely up there as one of the most complete rock types in the game if you're asking me. I really think this stat distribution speaks monster. Look at it, 85 in HP, 135 in its attack. It's it's beyond me how much this thing can hurt. It is so scary. 130 in fence, while not as high as Ready Rock. 130, it's decent. It is definitely decent. Special attack at 60, yeah, same issue as Ready Rock, really. Uh, special defense at 80, yeah, it, it's definitely lower than Ready Rock, but we will go more over why that necessarily isn't an issue. Uh, attack, I was gonna say, but speed, of course, at 25. Yeah, we're not gonna see a rock polish set here now. They, they're, they, it won't work. It, it's not worth it. Scoff said, will outspeed base 55 Pokemon. Though I feel like that's worth mentioning. But overall, speed is necessarily not what you're gonna go with. However, 
Overall, Gigalith has a very high bulk, it is a really hot attack. It most certainly can survive things, and it most certainly can kill things in retaliation. Gigalith overall stat region is really, really scary. It's a very hard wall breaker. While it isn't, you know, speedy as stated before, this is a Pokemon that so hits, retaliates, and kills, and it does this really well. However, we're really not done talking about this Pokemon. Same as Radio Ruffin comes ability, Sturdy. Is it necessarily useful? While this Pokemon definitely can be one it KO'd mostly easier than Ready Rock, it's still, I would say, a waste of an ability. Sand Force, it's great. Uh, C moves like C Stone Edge with Sand Force, yeah, the, mm, things die. Uh, we using this in UU lately with the um, offensive Giggly with C Stone Edge. Gliscos. Eat your heart out. It it kills them. It kills them dead. But yeah, the ability most people are talking about and reason why you would use a Gigalith is because of the sand stream. It is just really resolving Gigalith's poor special defensive bull. It really isn't that poor. 80 very high for Radio for Radio Rock for a rock type. But when you go for sand stream and getting a 50% boost in that, yeah. Then Gigalith all of a sudden is especially defensively more bulkier than Radio Rock, and also has I was gonna say, but the residual damage with Sandstorm and Pokemon can actually use Sandstorm, with such as, of course, Stuffling, for example. Gigalith really does become a really strong team player, and while it defensively is very, very scary, it also supports the team, and due to that, the very few combinations here that one can make with this becomes really, really threatening to be forced to be dealing with, but overall, stat vision on Gigalith and ability, really good, definitely really good. However, we have a one flaw with Gigalith, and that is its move pool. It isn't as vast as I would say Red Rock is, and uh, it's definitely something that could potentially hold it back, however, Gigalith has the most, I would say, important aspect to make it workable. First and foremost, we have Rock Blast, Stone Edge, we have Explosion, Smackdown, uh, twice, actually. Um, rock Slide, Stealth Rock, Earthquake. Stealth Rock is a thing that I, I'm just going to mention that. Nowadays, we don't necessarily see Stealth Rock and Gigalith. Any good set with Gigalith doesn't necessarily have Stealth Rock. And uh, we're going to go over why that is uh, later here. Is it, we also have Curse. Curse is also a thing here. Since you have a low speed, it works really well. Such a Red Rock, really. However, I don't believe it as necessary here, because 135 in attack, yeah. Yeah, you, you find a switch in, you know, to figure out things from there. Um, heavy Slam, definitely a really good move. I mean, definitely prefer that over Iron Head. Um, it's just so much damage. Kiklip is a very heavy Pokemon, and you secure a, a much, much harder hit more often than not. Uh, same thing here with Block. Block can be used to get it with Toxic. It was stronger in Generation 6 than it is today, for the very same reason of the <clears throat> Sandstream. But overall, Block is there, and it's definitely a usable move. Superpower, great filler. Um, since it doesn't have any other fine and stabs, I would say it works very well towards it. And um, it alleviates some issues for it, though overall, it's always really when it comes to this type of uh, Pokemon. If you have Earthquake and Stone Edge, then usually you are fine. We also have Stealth Rock twice, I definitely messed up here. I'm, I'll keep on talking like nothing happened, but yeah, that's that's a thing. Stomping Tantrum, also for Gigalith. As stated here before, I don't believe it is as usable. However, it should be stated here that um, if you miss on Stone Edge, Stomping Tantrum will do the double damage. And I think that's something that people are missing out on. Because you don't have to miss Stomping Tantrum twice, you need to miss a move and then use Stomping Tantrum to get the double damage. The last thing here is Throat Chop, and yeah, it's it's a good dark filler. That, as I said before though, due to Gigalith's high attack, I don't believe it works as well as a filler as it does on Ridge Rock. Uh, but overall, Gigalith is really, really interesting. Um, it should be stated here that Smackdown combination with Earthquake and Stone Age was usually what you go with. The reason you don't go for Stealth Rock more often with Ridge Rock is because you actually need all the filler moves you can get. Uh, we have a few variation of the Gigalith. Uh, one set is of course the Shukaberry variant. Uh, that one definitely used Stealth Rock. The other one are Assault Vested or Smooth Rock. Assault Vest variant is actually one that are, well, roughly preferred. Uh, it goes fully offensive, you can soak any hit from Selassie in RU, but overall it's 
overarching theme here is that it's so defensive anyway, there's no point of setting up, there's no point of actually doing anything else but attack, because 135 attack is, is so tough to be forced to be dealing with. Much like actually another Pokemon that has a really high attack, uh, Rhyperior, it really comes down to what switch into my hit, and since the attack is so high, there really aren't that many. If you predict right, you'll actually get a kill so early, it's not even funny. Um, and of course, Assault Vest variant do allow you to survive, such as Solar Beans from other Pokemon, uh, looking at the likes of Ninetales, for example. But also, you know, overall, I do believe the only Pokemon that possibly could KO is actually Shaman, if they get a crit Seed Flare. Besides that, you, you, you're good to go, and, and that's really scary. Uh, you know, overall, the reason why you want to use Heavy Slam, by the way, and Sand Force, just gonna mention that real quick. Toy Kiss Free Falls. Mm, it's dead. <laughs> Overall, I think you guys get me. I'm definitely very, very biased towards Gigalith. I think it's a massively interesting Pokemon. There's so many good things going on with it. Uh, but it's very one-dimensional. But the things it does, it does really well. Like, so much well that it becomes a stature in RU. And just overall, it's extremely good rock type for the things it does. So between Regirock and Gigalith, the aspect becomes very, very much about which one does things better. And I, I believe I'm going to be as fair as I can here, because I do believe both Pokemon do really good stuff, but doing them differently. First and foremost, Gigalith is probably more of a team player, um, definitely can support a team with Sandstream, and that's something that I think is very good for a Rock-type, to be able to ensure that other Pokemon around it can be workable very well. Regirock, however, isn't necessarily all that. Uh, while, as said before, it has a few variations to get with you know, Stealth Frog, it's definitely bulky and, you know, can have the elemental punches. So there's a lot of strange varieties to it to make it interesting. And um, for this dialogue, I kind of want to say that Gigalith overall is better in a league concept and, of course, as a team player. Individually, though, I think Regirock stands out quite a lot more and has a lot to do with a broader move pool. Um, this distribution was going to say disruptor moves such as Thunder Wave and just overall a stronger rock polish. And you know, weakness policy is extremely usable towards Pretty Rock. In the end of the day, it, this dialogue for me becomes whether or not which Pokemon has the stronger stamina overall. And here is where I think Pretty Rock has an edge. While this is as edgy as Gigalith, it definitely has something that it could alleviate more. Uh, individually than Gigalith. It doesn't necessarily become stronger than Gigalith, but it sure as hell has the better overarching um, stamina and viability to be able to just exist in a pre-existing meta. And since Seam was introduced, while Gigalith do hit quite hard, Ridrock has the option to hit kinda hard too, and that's something that I think most people miss out on. 100 base power while low, it's very scary when you can't KO the Pokemon in the first place, and this is why I will make Regirock the better between these two. But trust me on this, this was not necessarily an easy task. For me, it came down to the filler moves, and um, Regirock, due to having the elemental punches, do resolve a few issues that I think defensively Rock-types are struggling with. While Gigalith do hit them quite hard, Ridrock has the option to want to KO them with, you know, Fire Punch on Ferrothorn, we have Ice Punch on Landers and Gliscor. Um We have stuff that I think works better on Regirock because of its defensive proudness. It doesn't mean a Gigalith is bad. Most, uh, like I said, they are on par with one another. I even go so far and say that Gigalith probably are better in other aspects, like, you know, as I said, with um, Sandstorm and I was kind of stumbling here, but what I'm trying to say is Stoutland combo, we have the extra combo, and there are a lot of things to make Gigalith really usable. It's just whether or not it is individually more usable than Regirock, and here where I think that it isn't. Um, doesn't mean, like I said, it's bad, it just means that Regirock has something standing out for it, and I am happy to say that I think I prefer that Pokemon over Gigalith when it comes to individual standards. So, with that said, what do you guys think? I really want to hear your comments here, because I know I'm, I'm probably being a bit biased towards get Regirock here, but I, like I said, I prefer Gigalith in so many aspects, but Regirock really has something about it that I think is, well, making it underrated. I don't believe it's as bad as people make it out to be, because quite frankly, facing a Regirock can be very, very scary, and I think this video hopefully proved why. So with that said, I want to thank you for as always guys for watching and join us next week where we're gonna look upon Ready Steel versus